and welcome to the Glacially Musical Podcast. It is beer, metal, swearing with the side of education this week. Of course, I am Nick Cameron of Glacially Musical. I'm joined by my good friend, a man who's always ready to dance, who's always tip-tap-tapping around, wearing, loves the makeup, loves the mask, Kabuki Chakas. How are we doing today, buddy? All righty. Um, You're going to spit some green something? mist? This is nothing. This is something. This is nothing. You gonna spit some green mist at me, like the great Kabuki? That's which is not, which they should not have named him. Now, that he had nothing to do with Kabuki whatsoever. I don't know if you can tell, but I've I've improved the set yet again. Yeah, yeah. There's decorations everywhere now. I've got my my Grave Huffer, uh poster right next to it is Mike Adams at his honest weight, and I put stickers around because I bought I, I bought too big of a frame. And in order to hide that, I finally found something to do with all these damn band stickers that I've been getting over the years, which that. makes it look to me like I'm <clears throat> like I'm at a club, and I, and you know I'm at a small club where there's band stickers just all over everything. So do you want to see what I do with my leftover stickers as well? At some point, yes. But anyway, if you oh what? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I see that. Look at this awesome sticker I got from a guy at uh, Riot Fest. This is. John Stamos. John Stamos, but it's the dancing logo under it's like he's dancing. Nice, Come on. Nice. How good is that? That is beautiful. Uh, for everyone joining us this week, thank you very much for joining us. We are taking a break from our Guar series, and we are going to be doing a really cool educational episode on vinyl records and vinyl record collecting. I have created a six-point agenda. We will get to that. But as we always do, we have a greeting, a beer check, shirt check, news meat of the episode the meat of the episode today oh i can't say it because you don't like that phrase so i'm not going to say it it is the delicious uh platter pie something i don't know uh this week my beer is a new one for the podcast a new one for me it is odell brewing it is an ipa it is a seven percent would not say behemoth but it is a seven percent delightful uh bit of business this is the Hazy IPA, Hazer Tag. And before I get to the pour, I just want to point out, you may recall I had the LEDs, or the, the Voltron Volume 1 in the past. Voltron Volume 2 is hitting the stores this week. So when you're here, you'll be able to drink Voltron Volume 2. Oh, you're going to save me one? That's amazing. No, we're going to go buy more. We, we, we should always say, even if you don't want to use a nomenclature i don't like you should always say what the episode is about it's i did about, you didn't quite you said it was educational you didn't say what it was i said it was about vinyl record collecting you, did you i don't think yes so. okay a hundred dollars i will bet you a I mean, hundred dollars a hundred dollars to bet right now i just came back from reno where i shot i shot a man just to watch him die well you know you never come back with money from there uh because it is the beginning of the hockey season i am rocking the hockey puck pint glass which was a father's day present nice and as this is a chase we're going to explain the finger fudge pour one more time it's straight right. down the middle you do it this way you let the fizz go fizzy so that way when this goes away it's all beverage and not gas and then you are not gaseous. Fun point. I, uh, I'm i not going to give the entire rundown of my Reno trip like I did my Chicago trip or my New York trip. But I will say, when I sent you that picture from the steakhouse with the beer and the steak, that guy poured my beer with the finger fudge pour. Unpr I should have sent you a picture. I should have sent you a picture of the steak I made this evening. I made a delicious cast iron skillet butter steak. Nice. Nailed um, it. I had something else to say. I can't remember now. But anyway. Um, it's beer time. It's, it's you, beer you should time. Be... should be cheersing, but I haven't poured mine. I'm having a beer I have had on the podcast before. One that will amuse you ah. is PBR. $1.99. Just going to point out, I'm going to remind the listeners, Keith, he lost all his money in Reno, so he's down to PBR money. That was the pop. It sounded very loud. It was good. I heard that. that. the finger fudge pour into a somewhat dirty glass. I don't think you need to finger fudge pour that or even put it in a glass, really. I think you can just put it down your butthole and drink it, pour it out your butthole into a glass. It'll probably taste about the same. Shh, here's the ASMR version of the, the glass with the beer in it. Okay. All right, cheers. Cheers, my friend. I love PBR. I don't give a shit. 
Nah, PBR is actually fine. I just like making fun of it because it makes me feel like a big man. Um, it's one ninety nine for a twenty four ounce. That's all I gotta say. Yeah, I can get a mm. I can get a ten percent STL IPA, nineteen point two ounces, for two and a quarter. So, I mean, granted, I live in the Midwest, but I feel like that's better. Uh, I'm gonna move on to my vinyl check. Whenever I feel I. When I when we interviewed Mega Ran, I I realized I had uh, not purchased his latest record. I, I he's probably not listening, so like I said, I'm not going to buy the kids one. It's that it's, I'm I'm not going to buy that one. But I mean, I could see where people would love it. It's not for me. But what I did purchase was Mega Ran Live '95. This is a concept record about rapping, as told through the lens of being a draft pick in basketball. Which is a neat concept. Lyric sheet, of course. And I've already swapped it out. Is that what's on that vinyl? What's that? Uh, oh, well, the label itself is basketball. Oh, this is good because I can actually see what this looks like here. And I'm not sure what the little handlebars are, but I'll be honest, it looked a lot cooler in the mock up than it did when it got here. But it sounds great. It's perfectly flat. No warps, no skips. And and I know Mega Ran is one of those people that does record digitally. And that's actually one of the things I want to probably should be talking about today that's not on the agenda. But I'll throw it on there later. Maybe we'll get to it. Maybe we'll get to it. So I have two vinyls today. I spent the weekend in Reno. Every city I go to, I try to go to the local record store. I went Saturday, I tried to Reno, the biggest little city in America, they like to call themselves, and I plugged in the name of the record store into my Uber app, and it took me to some place that is not the record store, but some other place with the same name. Recycled Records is the place, but there was also another business called Recycled Records at a different address that is not the Was it store. a bunny ranch? It wasn't the bunny ranch. Was it a bunny ranch? It wasn't a bunny ranch. I'm just asking the question. It wasn't. Were you disappointed that it wasn't since it mm, wasn't the record I'm store? I was disappointed that it wasn't the record store. So I ended okay. up just walking around yeah. Midtown Reno. Mm. Uh, but that ended up, ended up the neighborhood where I got my steak. So that's fine. Um, well, there you go. You got something out of it. It was delicious and fantastic. And um, so I found this place, Recycled Records. I went on Sunday, did actually get to go, and it was awesome. And... Uh, it's right next to a place called Scoopers that is ice cream and burgers. That was also Oh, I thought it was a poo poo place. No. That's not that's marginally funny. So I got two even though I still have records from other places, I wanted to share these. Not in order, but anyway. Here is my first record from Recycle Records. You got this one already, the brand new Oh yeah. Which which uh which, which variant is it? Um the orange. Yeah, that's what I got too. Maybe it's only got one and I don't know that. Rhymes with orange. But um usually usually obituary is good for two or three variants. Yeah, I'm sure they had a plain it's relapse records. I'm sure they had a plain black. Right. Yeah, yeah. Like orange soda orange. That's safety orange. I love that. Safety I love, orange you call it. I that love before. that for I love that for obituary. So 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 quick little sidebar before my second check. I went mm -hmm. to Reno specifically to see Biohazard and Megadeth. And then I was like, while I'm there, the room is dirt cheap, and there's several other concerts happening over the weekend. I'll just stay the whole weekend. So I see Biohazard. I didn't want to wait till next year to see them. They were amazing, and the whole crowd was into it. Normally the casino crowd, you know, it's like half mm -hmm. casino oh, people yeah. and half fans. But Reno has a lot of rock and metal fans. Plus it's like centric to the Bay Area in California. So a lot of people, you know, it's not that close, but it's close enough. There were multiple people I met that were from here also, from San Francisco. So Megadeth was great. High marks for the new guitarist, Timo. I don't think Kiko is coming back, by the way. It's just my personal opinion from the way Dave is talking shit about him. And um, I hope he's great. I love him. I hope he's coming back. He's not coming back. This is every time. I love that guy. He's definitely not coming back. Dave talking shit about a guitar <laughs> player who left the band? Yeah. Wow, that's, that's so totally problems. different. Timu, Timu killed it so much so that Dave was like, we're adding in new songs to the set we haven't been playing because he came over prepared to play with us. I was like, wow. That's, that's that is awesome. awesome. They played Angry again. They played She-Wolf, which had been out of the set for a minute. Angry again? Have they I ever loved, played that one? Yeah, a lot. I've seen him do okay. it a lot. I love that song. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. I'm getting that confused with 99 Ways to Die. I wish they would play that. I love that, too. I saw them play it once. It was great. 
So listen to me dropping the dropping the, the rare the tracks. Deep, the deep cuts, diadems. How about that one? Or yeah, um, from Demon Knight. Mm -hmm. Um, here is. So I see Me I see Biohazard Megadeth on Thursday. Then Friday is Bad Religion, and I didn't realize it was in a tiny club because according to their tour, one of their tour crew guys that I talked up. He was like, oh, you know, we only took this show because we had a night off and it would cost us like 10 grand to take the night off or get paid to play this little show. The next night they played in a 5,000 seat theater. So they played in the... Yeah, they're playing basic, the pageant here, which is 3,500. They, they played a bar that was 267 people and it was sold out and I didn't know. And I walked up to try to buy a ticket and they didn't have any. It's like and seeing I, uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers at Moe's. And I bullshitted my way into the show for free. Um, nice. And so because I did that, I bought a shirt, which I'll wear in a future shirt check. But because I went to the record store day, I went to the record store the next day, I ended up having, I saw this and I had to get Bad Religion, where's my camera? Bad Religion Suffer, sorry. Uh, so this is a classic 90s Bad Religion album, amazing stuff. They were incredible. They played for like, for them to play like 28 songs in two hours is a lot. For some songs 60 for them. Old, isn't, isn't that 60, about 60 minutes? 60 year old guys. For them, I mean, they have some longer ones. Um, and then That's Sunday, easy. which was also part of my original agenda, I had I saw Alice in Chains and Royal Thunder, who were also all incredible. It was amazing to see Royal Thunder, who is a band I literally saw in a bar 10 years ago with 15 people beside the band. And now they're opening for Alice in Chains. Uh, but anyway, so Royal Thunder was one of those bands that was part of my my personal new music renaissance. Their album C C V I. Yep, yeah, that was it first. I got to see the whole band, talk to them after the show, give them all a hug, tell them how proud I am of them. So here's the Bad Religion comes with a lyric sheet, handwritten. Mm -hmm. Looks mm -hmm. like the handwritten original lyric sheet. And then here is the vinyl. Epitaph Records, by the way, is the label. Their guitar play former rhythm guitar player brett gerwitz who's the founder of epitaph on the 180 gram i think this is a repress with the classic epitaph red label and i have a bad religion record i did not have any in my whole collection there is one i want to get because i uh 18 year old me 20 year old me would probably gut me like a fish now for saying this but there is a bad i, I like bad religion now yeah, i didn't used band. to they're a great band um mm -hmm. social distortion i don't like but Bad Religion, I love. Uh, yeah, quick shirt house. check for me. Last week, I did take in, as I mentioned everywhere on the socials, uh, 20 Watt Tombstone. And as mm -hmm. I practice what I preach, I am wearing my 20 Watt Tombstone t-shirt. They didn't have the one I wanted. The one they had the one I wanted. It was bluish. And they only had a double X. And I am not a double X gent. So I got this one. Wife likes it, though. 15 bucks. You know what? 15 bucks. If you that is cheap. Having been the owner of multiple 20 watt pieces of merchandise, isn't his clothing and merch the best quality shit ever? This is really nice. Right? It's really comfortable. It's very they, soft. They really care about the merch. Like they don't charge a lot and they make they buy high quality stuff. You're a baby seal. Okay. Uh, I am wearing my Mastodon shirt, or Mastodong, as I like to call him. It's like a dinosaur. That was an MC Lars reference, but oh, was it? From, okay. from his song uh, with uh, MC Front, Captains of Industry. Right. right. If you know that, I'm actually rather impressed. No, you brought it up before. That's the only reason I remember. You oh, fair enough. It's it, a you great mentioned song. It in the, you mentioned it in the Mega Ran episode as he was not a captain of industry. Yes. Well, yes. It's like, what pun... What circular logic do you need to understand to make this pun and get it? But he got it. He laughed. He got it. That's, That's the point. The I wasn't trying to make you laugh because you turned your damn mic off, so I can't hear it anyway. Oh, you! I turned the mic off for the betterment of mankind. News check. If you don't mind, I'll go first. You do. Uh, as you shared on Ghost Cult Mag today, Black Sabbath is re-releasing their first eight records on picture disc. Wow. If there's anything we needed... It's another box set from Black Sabbath of the first eight records. But now it's on picture disc. So apparently they are heading into the kiss level of stupidity when it comes to repressing this stuff. And, you know, they could repress Headless Cross or Forbidden or Cross Purposes, stuff that's never been repressed, stuff that goes for stupid money. But no. No, they're repressing the same crap that I can go get it. I could go if I wanted to, I bet you for less than two hundred dollars, 
I could leave my house, get in my little electric car, which doesn't have a big range. And I could probably come home with those eight records. Maybe that'll be an experiment. We'll do that when I see you. Are you buying them? I might. I don't know. Okay, I only okay. have a couple of Sabbath records on vinyl. Um, I've got... Uh, are they six I, I, or eight? I, it's okay, eight. Are you sure it's the eight? The yeah, eight with Ozzy. Eight. Yeah. It's up to, up, up to Never Say Die, which... Never no say one, die is never say die. No, they should have. They should have. That album is terrible. Yeah, it's not good. Uh, so here's one thing. I don't think this is totally unfair. BMG does not is not the owner of those other Black Sabbath records. BMG is the owner of the mm. eight Black Sabbath records, Heaven and Hell, Mob Rules, and the live one, and then they kick them off the label. Oh right, yeah. Rhino has um, so Rhino the Dio records. Yeah, Rhino is Rhino is Warner and has all the Dio stuff, except yeah, but except Heaven and Hell. Except Heaven and Hell, but BMG, it's probably BMG doing this more than I know. Sabbath doing this. It's not I Sharon. I know, I know. Sharon is technically Sharon and Iomi are the trademark owners of Black Sabbath, by the way. Yeah, so, I don't know how that happened. Well, they offer. It's kind of funny. Uh, Iomi went to, I told you, this is a story in Geezer's book. Iomi went to Geezer and said, listen, they're trying to screw us. Come in with me on this lawsuit. Are we including Bill? No, we're not including Bill. It's just me and you. And Geezer's like, mm, okay, sure. And then he turns around and he gets a letter from Tony. I've joined Sharon and I'm not doing this lawsuit with you. Dude, what the fuck? Like, well, you know... One of the things Ozzy said in the long form video, "Don't blame me," which was uh, also also featured uh, uh, Randy Castillo, God rest him, and uh, Mikey Nez. The one thing Tony wanted more than anything was to own Black Sabbath, and now he does. He just wanted to be the boss, and he was always the boss, and now he's the boss. It's completely his, and he can be happy. He's not completely the boss because Sharon is the co-owner. Well, of now it's yeah. Now now Sharon's. He's only a little bit of the boss. And, well, I mean, this, and, the thing is, we're that's... talking about the we're talking about the. I'm amazed he was even willing to tell Geezer that this was happening because you think... know Tony is not good about communicating. Telling dudes, I'm done with you. Yeah, like there away. was a there was a rumor. Well, there there was a joke between Glenn Hughes and uh, Ian Gillen. And uh, Tony Martin, that they were going to show up at a Black Sabbath reunion show, all three of them together, because they've never been actually fired by Tony. So they were all going to show up and be like, all right, we're here for the gig. Just to see how we go. Anyway, let's. Well, push forward. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, no one needs this. And you're the person that taught me that picture discs really have lessened the value of the sound of the record and, and not necessarily. I have one. It it sounds okay, but you know what? I would trade it for, I would trade it for just a regular one any day of the week. Picture discs are just dumb. It's yeah, just before dumb. I met you, I, I had been buying a lot of those. And, they, uh, you know, some of them are cool. Um, there's a tool one I have that Adam Jones personally did the etching. I showed you the one I checked yeah, a month yeah. ago with Devin Townsend, that seven inch that I recovered from about 10 mm -hmm. years ago, also etched by Devin. So, I mean, those are cool, but like they don't add anything to the sound. They're... Picture <clears throat> discs are not for people who are listening to the records. Right. So, two, do, you, do you have any more news items? Or no, I'm good. good. I'm so, good. I have two news items. It was a shorty and a longy. So, I'll do the shorty first. And so, the shorty is... Uh, as you know, one of my favorite things to talk about is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. The induction ceremony and concert is soon to come in, in three weeks, right before I see you. I'm but waiting for you to say that it doesn't matter and you don't care. It doesn't matter and I don't care, but we're going to talk about it anyway. But we always talk about we it. We always talk about it because I don't care about it, but I actually really do. But I don't. I do too. But I do. I do. I, will, I don't I, I, I care. And this is a minor note, but I was going to say I f they announced the performers and uh, the performers not performing that are being inducted is Rage Against the Machine. Now, Rage Against the Machine is kind of on a hiatus because Zach blew his leg out and did that whole tour sitting on a speaker. Uh, they said he was in constant agonizing pain and even pain meds didn't help. And he just toughed it out for a whole tour, which had to be difficult, on and wow. off the bus. Can't, That's hockey can't, stuff. Can't jump around and do what he does and just kind of sit on a on a speaker and rap. It's kind of suck, kind of for him. 
And so they canceled a whole year of tour dates. They have not rebooked. There are no official plans to come back together. And, you know, it was a reunion that was built on perilous, thin ground, thin ice anyway. If you should go skating on the thin ice of mod life. And so I'm a little disappointed and surprised that they're not at least going to perform at the Rock Hall, even though I know like a part of them is probably like, F this corporate rock nonsense. And then the other part of them is like, we're a big corporate rock band and we should perform at this thing. And, I, and they're not performing. So I'm, I'm sure Tom Morello, I'm sure they'll all show up and maybe speechify. Maybe Tom gets on and jams. Maybe Brad gets on and jams. You know, he was in Black Sabbath and such and other things he's done. Um, but I'm a little bummed. And I think it's a bad sign for that band for 2024 that they can't even come out and do one song or two songs at this Hall of Fame thing means does the hall of fame even matter i mean is, is that a big deal that is, i mean everybody isn't. gets in right no it's the hall of very good as you know cheryl crow should not be in uh maybe missy elliott arguably she can be in well you know what there's some nhlers that i should say should not be in there's some that aren't in that i say should put tiger williams in the hall of fame how do you feel about this are we is it is there a blues game when i'm in town can we go to a blues game oh my god Let's, you don't have to look it up right now, but I would love oh, to I, go to a game. Probably. I've been to a hockey game in like five years. Well, we could, let's see. Da, da, da. Go ahead and just talk. Yeah, so, um, anywho, yeah, NHL season's here. Blues look pretty good. Rangers look okay. Not world beaters, but decent. They The Blues, are. it all depends upon what the kids do. It's and the, mm -hmm. it's all about the kids. Okay. Uh, out, uh, is it the fifth? Our show was the third and the fifth. I'm coming in on the night of the second. Oh, shit, son. Hockey Night in Canada's in town. All right. On the fourth, the Canadiens are in town. Oh, and the game starts at 6 p.m. Le Habitans. Maybe we go. I don't know. We'll see. What if we hold... go? We got a well, lot of stuff to do. If we go, we can't have steaks. Oh, no. That's not... if we if we have steaks, what we can do is we can watch the game on the outdoor in the outdoor yeah, theater in front of a I, yeah, fire pit. We don't have to go to. I mean, like I'm greedy. I want to go to a game, but like we don't have to go to a game. We can, yeah, they're they're expensive once they won the cup. All of a yeah. sudden, it got real. Yeah, and then we have podcasts to record and other things. Oh, I yeah. have to pitch you still in a record store to visit and Steve Ewing's hot dogs. I don't know. Only one record stores to visit. At least four. Oh shit. Okay. Um minimum next news item and this is a little longy but i'll try to breeze through it um give me a pause so i can go get a second beer while you're yep yep <laughs> sure so my longy news item while nick drinks a beer although he's gonna have to participate a little bit in this is record store day black friday is coming as we have done for two years in a row we preview oh, the record are we gonna get the day. am i are you gonna give me the yes now i'm gonna give you the whole list yeah, the yes, no, okay. And you just yes, no. I'm going to say X and O this time. X is no, O is just yes. Yes and no, please, as we'll do. Thank you. Um, so I have the list on my screen. Right, and, uh, different, but... I'm going to try to mention titles that are relative to us and what we do. <sighs> yes or no. One, two, three. Thirteenth Floor Elevators, Bull of the Woods. Nope. All Time Low, Alive at Wembley. That's a no. Nope. Uh, Chet Baker Trio, Chet's Choice. Mm -mm. Beach Boys, the Beach Boys Christmas album. Hang on. How about I just say yes if it's a yes? If I say nothing, just assume it's a no. Just yes or no, please. What? Okay. <clears throat> Beach Boys Christmas album. You have a lot of Christmas albums. Yeah, I don't want that. Okay. Jeff Beck Tribute. Uh, it's an EP. I don't know what that tribute is. Tribute to Jeff Beck? I don't know. I think I've already got enough Jeff Beck. This is actually interesting to me because I saw the documentary Blood, Sweat, and Tears. What the hell happened to Blood, Sweat, and Tears, the original soundtrack? Maybe. Uh, I got their greatest hit, so no. Okay. Blast, just for clarity. Nope. EP. Uh, do, 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 Buck Cherry, Time Bomb, no. Hell no. This looks cool. Matt Cameron, backed by the Melvins, Gory Scorch Cretans, which is a basically an original EP as a tribute to the Melvins. Well, I'm not EP. buying an EP, no. Eric Carr, Rockology, the Picture Disc Edition. Hell no. Coheed and Cambria, live at Starland Ballroom. That's a maybe for Nick. 
two. What's on it? Do you got a track list? No. I mean, I could try. Hold on. That's two, a hard maybe. Two LPs. Okay. That's about uh, right. That's not clickable. I don't, I don't have the whole. Yeah. I had to either do the PDF with the alphabetical order list or the live okay, I got web you. version no, that fine. would allow me to click around. I my On brand, my favorite Toheed and Cambria records are the ones nobody likes. So right. probably not there. Continuing on. Cypress Hill Black Sunday remixes 12 inch single. Nope. Single? Hell no. De La Soul, Three Feet High and Rising, box, seven inch box set. Hell, hell no. Don't do that. Don't do a seven inch box set. One of their guys ever. has passed away and they got their care. rights back. So I think this is just for money. That's fine, but give me something I can, I'm going to want to play. Not just like, oh, look, a box of shit that I'm never going to use. That costs $200. This is a good Gray. One. Man, Death is... Individual Thought Patterns 2023 Remaster on Relapse. Oh, that's a hard maybe. That's got the philosopher on it. That's, that's a, a good answer. track. I don't have any death records. I should probably have something. Exactly. The Door is live in Bakersfield. Mm, probably a no. This is a yes for me automatically. Dr. Dre, The Chronic, 30th Anniversary Edition. No. Oh, that's the CD. I want the vinyl. It's out already. Oh. Sorry, my bad. Let me uh, roll back to The Doors record real quick. One of the things about the Doors and their live recordings is if you listen to Absolutely Live or in concert or the official live ones they put out during their lifetime, not the stuff that comes out later, but the stuff in their lifetime, it's amazing. It's truly wonderful. They also had to record an entire tour to get those quality recordings. The vast majority of Doors live records that I've heard, frankly, aren't that good. Mm. They gotta they gotta piecemeal them all together. Interesting. Um and I love the doors. This is a, a non buy, but I just gonna bring it up out of sadness. Justin Towns Earl, Steve Earl's son, has two record store day LPs coming out live at Grimey's and Yuma, which was his big record. He passed away last year, so sad. Uh mm -hmm. not gonna buy it though. Um there's some cool jazz stuff coming out, but I'm gonna skip over. No, uh, Spirit of Jazz is not me. Faces had me a real good time with Faces in session and live at the BBC seventy one to seventy three on Rhino LP. I'll be I'll be honest, I'm interested, but not interested interested enough to spend record store day money on it. Accurate and fair. Uh, f this is a show I was at, so maybe I'm gonna buy this. I'm not the biggest Flaming Lips fan, but I was at this show. Yoshimi battles the Pink Robots live at the Paradise Lounge. I've been there. It's really not a lounge; it's a Paradise Rock Club. Boston, October 27, 2002, LP. Ooh, I might buy it because I was there. Why were Listen, you in Boston? I lived there. No! Remember? I lived there. Did you not hear me say it on every episode? Oh, I used to live in Boston? No, I, I, apparently I just check out. I just check out when I start talking. He just zones out. Uh, a couple of Jerry Garcia records I don't care about. Goo Goo Dolls, self-titled. Nope. Goody Mob, Soul Food. It's a good nope. record, but no. Government Mule, Time of the Signs EP. Well, I'm interested in Government Mule records, not at Record Store Day pricing. Okay, Gary Hoey, Hark, the Ho Ho Hoey hits on Surf Dog Records. Mm, big no, big no. John Lee Hooker, live at uh, Cafe Agogo. I believe that's already been released, and you can get that. I don't mm -hmm. think you need to spend record store. I mean, there's about a million John Lee Hooker live tracks. I mean, right. it's not like it's that hard to find. And this is going to be 60 bucks. This is an absolute buy for me. I Wrestle the Bear Once, now defunct. It's all happening. Their big record on Brutal Planet Records. That's a buy for me. I like the name. I love them. They are the predecessor of the current band Spirit Box, by the way. Uh, Jesus Lizard Blue. Not a big Jesus Lizard fan. How about you? No, I'm good. I don't... The alternative, like, <laughs> college rock stuff from the 80s and 90s, you know, so I just never really was able to dig into that. That's one of the genres that I just don't like even a little. Looking back, I mean, I can appreciate hair metal. Looking back, I can appreciate some of the big grunge bands, but college rock, spin doctors, REM, uh... If you like it, that's great. It just doesn't it 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 just doesn't turn my crank. It it it, it feels like it's licking my butthole and I don't want that. Okay. Sorry, that was weird. Very very too explainy. Uh Joan Jett and the Black Hearts mindsets were halfway through the list. 
Nope. I already got Joan Jett and Black Hearts. I love rock and roll. Got it for five bucks. This is interesting to me. Scarlett Johansson has a record anywhere I lay my head on asbestos records. You want to talk about something that needs a picture disc? Yes. Anywhere I lay the pipe. Anyway, Scarlett Johansson. Uh, Jonas Brothers, no. no. Nora Jones, no. no. Lenny no. Kay. Mm. Mm. Here's a buy from both me and you. King Missile Happy Hour. No. I'm buying that. College Rock. No, thank you. No, King Missile Detachable Penis. College Rock. LA Guns Live in Boston, 89. No. Definitely no. no. Jerry Lee Lewis, no. Limp Biscuit, four live or three live. Why? Hang on. Limp Why would anybody live. buy Jerry Lee Lewis on Record Store Day? Yeah. Just go to the damn thrift shop. Right. You can, I mean, just go straight up Macklemore and yeah. you can walk out Two with most double of live for five dollars. Limp Biscuit double live Rockin' Park 2001 double e LP record. I just threw up in my mouth a little. <laughs> Wait, double? Park would you say double LP or double live EP? Double LP. Okay, they said EP for a second. No. That would be on brand for them. No, Put out a double EP. Linkin Park lost demos. Nope. Mad Lib before the verdict. That's interesting. Nah, not familiar. Po Post Malone looks like a greatest hits album on vinyl. Oh, no. good lord, no. Mamas and the Papas live in Monterey Pop. Okay, you can get so much Mamas and the Papas out there. It's all any antique mall, any thrift shop. You can get their whole catalog for twenty dollars. Amy Man Seven Inch. Uh. -uh. Meat Puppets Forbidden Places LP. Nope. Do, 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 do. Missing Persons Live. No, thank you. Mm -mm. Motley Crue, Too Young to Fall in Love EP. Nope. Do, 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 do. Napalm Death from Enslavement to Obliteration on mm, Earache. No, a... there's one that I would consider, but I forget the title yeah, of it. Scum is out right now as a remaster. Not, it's you not get Scum. It. It's uh, one with Jesse Pintado. It's got Godzilla on it. Sure. Do, 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 do. Here's a good joke for This is 40. Graham Parsons and the Fallen Angels live. Mm -hmm. If you watch the This is 40 uh, knocked up sequel. Can't was that watch. the guy that was that he was trying to like sell him? And he's like, Billy, and Billy Joe was there. Like, Get the fuck away. I'm just trying to enjoy this. <laughs> yes. And he sold like eight Dude, copies. Dude, stop fucking talking to me. He sold like eight copies of the record. Prince, get off the single. No, thank you. All right, Sacrilege BC, which was the original Bandcamp metal band, Party with God 1985 demo on Southern Lord. Don't know that no, I want their demo. I don't. I don't buy demos. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah. I don't. I don't buy demos. Are you a Schooly D fan? Uh, I like the Octane Hunger Force theme song. Schooly D self-titled Get On Down LP. Well, that's probably cheaper than it is on Discogs. Uh, it could be. Uh, that's one of the. That's a. That's a. That's a record store day rarity. Screaming trees live at Egg Studios. That's a maybe for nope. me. Nope. Paulie Shore and the Krusties. Hell no. Can move on. Skid Row. Besides ourselves, EP. Nope. No EP. Slaughter to prevail live. No, thank you. No, thank you. Do 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 do. do. Billy Strings. I still hear about this guy. California sober. Featuring Willie Nelson, a single. Why would you put out a single on Record Store Day? That's the seventh single you've mentioned, by the way. There's a lot of these. NEPs. Tantric, yeah, no. self-titled nope. album. I liked, I liked them better when they were Days of the New and they were still terrible. I love Days of the New. Um, Taproot, self, their original debut album, Blue Sky Research. Days of the New, man. The first time I heard them, I bought their CD because they were touring with Metallica. I saw that. Yeah, I love them. I saw the tour. I didn't see them because I hated that CD so much. I just didn't show up for them. Oh. They were first. And it was like listening to Kiawas for an entire record. And okay. Kiawas is like that amazing, cool acoustic track by the metal band. And then they just Super never sure. stopped. Yeah. And then they just never stopped doing it. It's like. So Taproot, Blue Sky Research, has their one hit song on it, Poem. Uh, but yeah, not, not enough to buy the whole record. Um... Here's a jazz record I could end up getting. Cal Jada, the uh, vibraphonist, Catch the Groove live mm. at the Penthouse. Uh, Turnstile has their collaborative EP with Bad Not Good, which is a pop group, New Heart Designs. I'd rather have Was Not Was. Was Not Was, Bad Not Good. Bad for Good. U2, Under a Blood Red Sky, the live album on LP, I think for the first time in a long time. Don't care think about I them. I think I threw up in my mouth again. Don't like them. Although I will, I was gonna mention the MGM Sphere opened in Vegas, and they were the debut band. I saw that. It did look cool, but 
not with them playing music. I don't need sensory overload for a concert. As I mean, U2 puts on a big enough crazy stupid show as it is to have it like in IMAX where I'm in my where Bono's in my peripheral trying to kill me. I don't need that. If only it would make their music better, but it can't. Um, no, you can't. You can't look, Beavis. You can't polish a turd. <clears throat> uh, Ultravox Quartet Stephen Wilson Remix LP. Good lord, are we almost done with this? We are almost done with this. I'm Thank onto God. the very you, followed by V. Various artists. Do 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 do. do. Judgment Night soundtrack getting another re-release. Another for one. Oh, I still no. need this though. I, I refute now. I'm just but not buying it on principle. If they're doing it again, okay. I mean, if if it's if it's so popular, you need to release it again. Just release a damn thing. Punk goes Christmas. Hell no. I might. I think that's it. Wendy a Williams maggots. I haven't. I haven't even bought like. The one with Gene Simmons, Ace Fraley, and Vinnie Vincent. So I'm probably not going to buy this one. X Ain't Love Grand on Fat Possum Records. Ain't Love Grand. Ain't lo- what does the cover of that one look like? I don't recall, but... I got to look it up. X-Cop- I like X. Speaking of gore, X Cops, you have the right to remain silent. Uh, that might be a buy for me. Uh, I think I already have that album by by, by X. Okay. I'm talking about X Cops now. I'm sorry. I'm st- I'm still on X. Okay. You, Who's X? You surely are on X. X Cops is the punk rock band from Michael Bishop of Gore. Mm, interesting. I'm not that, gonna buy the it. The band but... he was in before Gore. Actually. Yeah, I've already got Eight Love Grand, so I don't need them. Okay. Young oh, Blood... that was their last record, and it's kind of awful. Okay then. Sorry. We've now said enough about that band. Thank you. I. War. The world is a ghetto. 50th anniversary collector's edition. Didn't know I needed it. Don't think I do. No, I just want to grade it as a low rider, and I'm good. Hmm. Uh, and then for the final, Rob Zombie, Lunar Injection, Kool Aid Eclipse, Conspiracy, LP. You what? know what? I'll hand it to him. His titles are amazing. <laughs> amazing the only bad. problem I no, they're amazing. They're great. The only problem I have with his records are the music contained within. Other than that. Totally fine with it. The tours are good. You know, he goes out, he plays, he's got the monsters, and they wear makeup and shake their heads like this. I mean, they have a good time, but it just, it's terrible. The show was incredible. Yeah, I know. But the but music is not memorable anymore. No, it's it's not. It has to, none of, after Dragula, that was the peak of his solo career, they which did. was all... Which was already halfway down the mountain there was from a good song on, um There's a couple of good songs on the Educated Horses album. That John Five actually like co wrote. Did he actually play? He played on and co wrote. Like but... no, I mean like play play or yeah, like yeah. was there. Like he wrote the riff. And he, okay, because I've I've heard him same. I've heard albums he's done, Venomous Rat Regeneration Vendor, <laughs> and I'm like, where's John Five? Is he even right. here? Why did you, why do you have this guy? Why are sure. you paying? I mean, you don't need him for that. You don't need him for this. Just, you could have me do it. Yeah, just randomly, last thing, not related to. So that's the whole record store day list. I think I've got four or five things that I probably would buy. I got a one, maybe. And that's going to be it, after my trip to see you. So I will have already spent a lot of disposable income on records on that trip. So let's talk. I carried back a poster from Alice in Chains and four vinyls from that record store. And I had like eight in my hand and I put back four because I was like, I don't need these things, but I want them. So here's a, just a random thing. Did I send you the article about Discogs, the hit piece on Discogs? I've been. You did not send me one, but I've been seeing hit pieces on Discogs. Where I mean, and I, I have not bought anything there in a while, so I don't know anything about the. So the fees. The, I'm going to sum it up. There's a consensus among collectors that the that Discogs is kind of mailing it in and becoming very profit driven and diminishing returns if you're a collector buyer or seller and and urging people to maybe find a new platform to be on now you've used the platform much more intensely than i i struggle to keep up i still don't have all my records cataloged it's like an ongoing slow process i will continue to use discogs as an insurance tool no matter what so it's saying that they haven't really improved the platform in ages no, but I don't they care. They don't about have that, an actually. app, which is bizarre. And that they have, strange. they have raised the prices 
dramatically the cut they take and now apparently there's a new cut that they're taking on top of the cut they're taking so now they've doubled their take on every sale see which, they used to be pretty reasonable at about eight percent that sounds and like it's like 20 percent now or 25 percent <sighs> I have the last thing I sold on Discogs was a couple of weeks ago. It was MC an MC Chris CD for twenty dollars plus seven in shipping. I think I pulled in after shipping uh, about twenty bucks. So they took and shipping wasn't that much. I was going to refund him, but he, he didn't follow the directions, so I didn't refund him. I would say this: what I like I like about Discogs is the you know I think like most vinyl collectors, specifically vinyl. It plays into our mania about collecting. It well, kind of... one of the things I love about it is I can sit there when I got time and I'm bored. I can just click on any one of my records and it says, oh, check out these. Here's what it's going for you. No, I mean, look, look at these other records that you might enjoy. Oh, OK. <clears throat> so it's an idea. It's an idea generator for you right. to buy next. And it's also I... a great it's, it's a great singular place to hold on to one one list. I have I, one I, one list. I like that, discounts. and I like getting the alerts. Hey, something on your list is back. Yeah. Normally, it's like that Chris Cornell Metallica thing that originally was twenty bucks, and now it's like hundred bucks. And I right. don't want to buy it. For, I want it, but I don't want to buy it for a hundred bucks. I also have seen the Death Magnetic on there, which you keep telling me to buy. I'm still hoping to find one in the wild in a store, and not buy one from Discogs. I got That's one on Amazon. I I'll, I'll bet. I, I guess so. All right. Anything else here? That's it. It's exhaustive. Right. I know we did a very long, but we always do this. Whenever the list comes out two years in a row, I read down the we list. Go you, yes and no. We, we gotta, 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 gotta. So let's. So I'm, uh, I'll just say this. I have Thanksgiving plans, friend, Friendsgiving, and I had the option to stay overnight in the area like I did for 4th of July. I'm coming back home to do Record Store Day Friday morning. So I'm going to do it one more time. Now that I found a place that I like that's manageable. I just have to show up and be on the line. I don't have to come the night before and put my list in like Amoeba well, wants you to. So I'm going to do that. What's great about St. Louis in terms of Record Store Day business is most St. Louisans don't give two shits about Record Store Day. They only care about the stuff KC plays. So it's easier. You know, nobody has lists. You don't got to wait in giant lines. But I'm not going to do that, period. It, it, the point of Record Store Day to me is to make sure we all get out and go spend some money at a brick and mortar store. Say hi, have a beer. Some A lot of the places here will give you a beer while you're there and for Record Store Day. And, you know, last Record Store Day, we bought two records. We bought Tori Amos B-Sides and we bought, I mean, you and I both bought the Dio live album, which was amazing. And, you know, it's I'm going to check to see if I can get my hands on that Cohen Cambria record. I will likely not buy it on the secondary market unless it uh, loses value like Roger Waters, The Wall Live in Berlin or like Beastie Boys, some old bullshit. I got both of those on Record Store Day after the fact for less money than they should. Then you know, the, the flippers lost money, which warms the cockles of my cold, dead heart when people lose money on that stuff. But let's move forward and talk about this week's meet. And we're going to have to chew this pretty quick because we we do go on. And I'm going to go till the beer is over. I got six things on the list. Let's see if we get there. Uh, this is just, you know, tips and tricks for being a vinyl snob. And that's a joke, of course. I am a vinyl snob as I, I'm well on record that I only buy music on vinyl. Do I have CDs? Yes. Do I purchase them? No, I have not purchased a CD in at least three or four years. And that was MC Chris's last record. And I'm if he does not release the next one on vinyl like he did not release the last one, uh, I ain't buying it. Because you know what? I spent $25 on that CD and I haven't listened to it in years because I did. I listen to music in this room. This is where I sit down to listen. So now... Before we get into the, the list here, the first thing I should say is you need to decide what kind of a vinyl person you're going to be. And then you need to reassess that from time to time because it will change. And I'm going to explain why that changes. First off, and this is this actually relates to what I just said. If you buy records to listen to, one, you are amazing. Two, you are smart. 
Three, you're not a dickhole that buys five copies of every variant to use it as your retirement plan. And if you do that, I kind of hate you. But 50% of all records purchased, 50% of all new records purchased in America today are purchased by people who do not own turntables. I saw somebody on a KISS forum talk about how much he loves the brand new colored pressings. Oh, really, bro? How do they sound? I don't know. I don't open them. Well, then what the hell do you even like? Does it matter if it's a uh, purple swirly, if you never see it, whatever. So, but if you actually listen to them, you're going to become accustomed to the sound of records, the sound of music on vinyl. It sounds different, period. And to, as, as I mentioned earlier with Mega Rand's records, he records digitally and masters them to vinyl. If the mastering process is done well, it will sound fine. It won't sound better. It'll just sound about the same. So the worst case scenario, if done properly, it will sound no worse than the CD or the digital, providing you take care of it. But now here's where it gets dicey. Do you want no feedback for me? You're just going to run down your list? You can't. If you got feedback, throw I mean, it. I mean, figure you kick it back to me at some point. Um, I'm, I'm, still, I'm still on point one. I haven't even you? gotten through okay. the point. Let me know when you're done with the point. So the, the, the real thing is, is people who... The people who find out that you buy records and listen to records, they're going to tell you you're listening to music wrong. It's an inconvenient. It's this, it's that. And you know what? You've got to be able to deal with that because you're going to hear it because being a vinyl person is like being a vegan or a CrossFitter. You tell everyone you meet within five seconds. And if you are a person who listens to vinyl on buys vinyl on the regular, it means you are somebody who is way more into music than your average person in America. Oh, Keefe is licking, he's sticking his tongue straight down there. You watching this on YouTube? Oh, wait, I'm talking. You can't see it. It was hot <clears> and <throat> sexy, and I'm a little aroused. Keefe? That's, that's what the ribbon is for. It's the blue ribbon Ooh. for the tongue. Um, so here's here's my 50 cents on this. Um, I think it's undoubtedly a lot of people, we have a hoarding nature, human beings, right? We collect things. People have junk drawers in their house. People like kitsch is a thing. Knickknacks. Uh, there's a guy up here in Sausalito who used to work for Industrial Light and Magic who has the biggest personal collection of Star Wars memorabilia ever. I'm trying to get there. It's $80 for a tour. You can touch everything. Ooh. I'm, I'm aroused just thinking about it. But, you know, I need somebody to drive me up to Redwood City or whatever, where it is, and uh, go with me. Because I need somebody to video me going through the place. Like, da, 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 da. <laughs> like uh, in Smog's uh, vault. I, I, I feel like if that happens, you're going to go from happy-go-lucky gentleman into sex offender. I'm going to go from before you're out the door immediately. Yeah, that's um, you're going to be on a list. I'm already on probably a list from this conversation, but I think people have a collecting nature, right? Ba Agreed, and I, I agree with that. I collected in my lifetime music cards, baseball cards, football cards, comic books, and now you know music, memorabilia, now records. Uh, yeah, um, for me, baseball cards, G.I. Joes, video games. G.I. Joes. Music. Yeah, I k Kiss yeah. Dolls, Kiss Everything when I was a little, poor as fuck, and my mom and dad still found a way to occasionally get us little Kiss things. If I could get anything today in my entire lifetime back, I wish I could get those original Mego Kiss Dolls or some facsimile of them. I, we never had the Paul. I think we had the Gene and the... Peter. They they've they've re-released them, but even the re-releases now because Kiss fans think that their Kiss collection is their retirement. They're gonna sell that move to Florida. Yeah, correct. But um, I will say this: like I I agree with you. I think there's no question. Most people listen to music on computer speakers or earbuds or earphones, and there's no question vinyl through a proper stereo of any stripe is a better musical experience vinyl is the perfect delivery system for songs it is a record is a perfect system especially in two channel yeah music is two channel it should not be five channel yeah so i said it just 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 my thoughts on it i think there's no question if you really love music and you like collecting the vinyl listening to it is really gratifying i don't have by any means the system you have 
which is Frankenstein together, gifted to you by your father-in-law. Yeah, my father-in-law gave me my 1971 right. receiver, my 1975 turntable. I have some shelf speakers and a pretty modern turntable from when I moved to California, which was a the gift. modern turn. There is nothing wrong with the modern turntables. I'm gonna throw that out there, except for the, the only real issue I have with modern turntables is the same. Ice sucks. That's a different deal. <clears> the it makes the, the the issue I have with modern turntables is the same deal I have with modern anything. Planned obsolescence is legitimately real. I have a coffee. I have three percolators from the fifties that still work. Do you have any Mister Coffee from the tens that still work? No, you don't, because they made them to break. And that's one of the great things about records is if you take care of them, they will last forever. I have sixty-year-old records. We all do. I've got Doors records. I've got Jimi Hendrix records from the 60s, from the early 70s, first presses that I came across and was lucky to find. What's the Jimmy press you sold me? I never even looked. 180. Sounds like ass. Thanks. You bought it. I mean, I, I didn't tell it. you to buy it. Well, I wanted it. Go ahead. Continue. No, it's, 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 I, to me, it sounds like ass because I just, I don't like the 180 repress sound in my, the vast majority of the time. My Black Sabbath. Uh, I believe is an 09 press. I have Black Sabbath self-titled. That is one of those records that you play for somebody to teach them why you listen to vinyl. And it's a 180 gram repress. It's the only one that's that good, though. The only one. And I got a bunch. I don't have... I have one, and it does not compare to the OG press of the same record I have. Oh. That's why it's going to go on the wall. The, the wall on the wall. Correct. Continue. Uh, point two, clean everything. The thing, the, there are two things that are the killers of sound for vinyl, and that's dirt and static. By wet cleaning your records, by brush cleaning your stylus, you will solve that. One of my coworkers, who's a vinyl guy, he not vinyl like me, you know, I he listens to Spotify and all that, and that's fine. I got no, I mean, I'm not going to throw any shade at anybody that does that. I actually really only listen to music, do listen to music on vinyl. Once in a while, like my iTunes has been down for 18 months. I have not been able to change the music on my phone in 18 months. Have you heard me mention it before right now? Nope, because I don't care. I'm actually finally setting it back up, but it's not a big deal. And one of the one of the things my buddy said is like, you know, after I did the glue trick, it find you wouldn't even know you're listening to a record. All the pops and buzzes are gone, and I'm like, bro. Most of my records don't have pops and buzzes. If they have pops and buzzes, but for mine, any record of mine that's got a pops and a buzz is because it's damaged. Period. My kill 'em all, my kill 'em all Megaforce does have some pops. It's got some noise, but you know what? Whatever. I don't care. It's it's Megaforce records. It's forty and years old. It's 40 years old, and, you know, I don't think any Metallica fans in 1983 were well known for their keeping care of their records. It's kind of like Led Zeppelin records. If you ever find a first pressing of a Led Zeppelin record, it's been thrashed. It's been boned on, and drugs have been cut up on it. You know, they, they, yeah, and they've had, and there's probably cocaine in the grooves and pot seeds in the sleeve. I've actually opened up records that I bought used, like, uh, case in point, Van Halen, 1984. I opened it up and I, 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 it, it, it's like, oh my God, it's like that line in The Simpsons. It smells like Otto's jacket. And I expected the stems and seeds to fall out of the record when I pulled it out. But cleaning, if you clean your records properly, if you take care of it properly, you will not have pops and buzzes. You will not have that vinyl sound you remember as a kid. You won't have that sound that the Beastie Boys put on their CDs in the 90s to give you nostalgic vibes. It'll sound clear. It'll sound vibrant. It'll sound lovely. Also, Beastie Boys records on 180 Repress sound great. That's another series. What you want is uh, on the on the get list when I come see you. Check your head. I have it. I don't. How do you not have it? I just don't have it. Just haven't had it. Okay. I mean, they, they make it. I know. It's my favorite. Okay. Uh, I don't have any feedback about that. You're 100% right. Clean your shit and uh, the minimally clean your stuff and clean your stylus and keep dust. I know it's hard, but you got to keep dust away from your. Turn. That's actually one of the things about the, the modern record players that I don't like is they don't. A lot of them don't have dust covers. 
and mine has a dust cover. Uh, unfortunately, I can't give you a really good tour of this room, but I wish I could. But yeah, I mean, so what you should not... probably do is video and narrate a tour of your room, and then I will make a social post for it for us to share. On Fair the enough. Nation of the socials. The um, cleaning your records, maintaining your stuff will just greatly enhance your experience period and that doesn't it doesn't regardless of how you're listening to it and that's just everything take care of your shit if you're gonna buy it you know it is what it is okay moving on to point three and there is no wrong answer on this unless you are a vinyl flipper that's the wrong answer and i hate you but you need to decide how vinyl you are it's like being, are you, it's like being vegan, right? And I, I make the joke, but it is. Are you pescatarian? Do you eat chicken once in a while? Are you vegetarian or are you vegan? When it comes to vinyl, I'm straight up Viglin. I only buy vinyl. That's all I buy. It's basically all I listen to. It's basically all I consume. Once in a blue moon, yeah. And if you just want to buy your absolute favorite records, Nothing wrong with that. There's nothing saying you have to have every Judas Priest record. You have to have every Metallica record. In fact, there is no single band that I am aware of who's got more than five anyway. I'm not counting James Legg and his three solo records. But I don't believe there is a single artist with more than five albums that I have their entire catalog. I do not have the entire Doors catalog. I never will. I am not going to get those two albums without Jim. I actually had one of them and it was uh, I don't have the solo. I don't have their their self titled, which is on my list. But I want to get an OG pressing, not a repress. And then, on top of that, it's not just that. There's even more. Do you want to be a collector of rare pressings, or do you just want to have the record to put on your turntable? For me, I evolved. It went from, oh, okay, yeah, I, I just want to have it on vinyl in some fashion to. No, I want the pressing that came out at that time. So hence why I have a Megaforce pressing of Kill 'Em All. Why do I have a first pressing of The Wall when I already had a 180 gram? It, it, and I, get, I joke, but they, those 180 sound fine. They just don't sound as lively. They just don't sound as good. It's like, you know, do you want to drive a Ferrari or a Corvette? I mean, that's basically the difference. And then you got to talk about how do you store them? How do you, it's, it's a big deal and it's a big commitment. And I am, because I live in the Midwest, I have an entire room dedicated to my records. That's a luxury and a privilege. I do not take lightly and I do not take for granted. And I know that not everybody has that. I put out a tweet forever ago saying, why aren't you, you know, me half, half in the can one night, put out a tweet admonishing all the music fans on my feed why aren't you listening to vinyl right now and i kept hearing they don't have the room bro and the other response of course it's expensive you and i'm gonna get back to that in a little bit actually i'm gonna bring up point six now so how fast should you be acquiring there's two ways you can acquire vinyl you can go quantity or quality and right now anybody could go to i could walk out my door spend two hundred dollars tops and come home with 500 records how many of them would i want to listen to eh, probably not many but it's important at the beginning at least you just buy the records you love you just buy the stuff you want to listen to as time goes on worry about it later but you're not going to fall in love if you're just buying all the stuff you're never going to listen to i bought a bunch of stuff in the beginning like O.C. Smith and The Fifth Dimension and all this stuff I never listened to. And I ne some of them I never listened to. And honestly, there's a George Clinton record I need to get rid of. I have never gotten all the way through it. It's just not good. I might be interested in that Fifth Dimension record. Um, oh, I got rid of that months ago oh, or okay. years ago. You want Fifth Dimension records? Hmm. Son, I could bring you 15 of the same no, record and for like $5. Which one you want? I got. Aquarius. I can get all of them. Oh my god! It, I had that. It's awful. Aquarius. Why don't you just get hair? You can get a hair. Hair is great. I have that. Oh yeah. Not giving it up, but I have um, it. My mom had the vinyl. I got it. Both anyway, so the point is, is you need to decide who you are, <clears throat> what you want to do, 
And there's no wrong. There's literally no wrong answer. If you just want your records to be your steak, if you want it to be your fine wine, that's fine. And, you know, you drink Budweiser every day, you're going to drink a craft beer on the weekend. That's not a bad place to be. You just have to accept that. Oh, and here we're going to move to the next point. Unless you have something to drop. FOMO. That is one of the things people ask me about, especially in the heavy metal community. Because in heavy metal and hard rock, those are, we are, and I've said this before and I'll say it again and I'll say it till the day I die and probably come back to haunt everybody to say it more. Metal fans are the most loyal. Nine times out of ten, if I jump onto your train, I ain't getting off. I found out two weeks ago I missed a telekinetic Yeti record. I have been beating myself up over this because I still don't have it. It's been two weeks and I didn't purchase it. Came out last year. It's not going to help them for me to buy it off Amazon, but damn it, I need it. I'm going to get it. So the question always comes, how do you deal with the FOMO when a band doesn't put it out? Simple. It's simple. You accept that you're never going to have every record you wanted. So maybe they put it out. Maybe they don't. It doesn't mean you can afford it. Again, oh, wait, I do have one one band's all of their studio albums. It's Led Zeppelin. I have all 10 Led Zeppelin records. That's pretty cool. Are you talking about new records that are coming out and you missed yeah. one? Or are you yeah, just yeah. talking about like, oh, and they repressed? I'm talking, about, I'm talking about bands, new bands that don't always press to vinyl because probably only about... 40% of new bands are pressing vinyl. I, I could be mistaken. This is unfair and should have been in the news section. But uh, Metallica is releasing those colored vinyls for Europe and the rest of the world finally. Because they were only available in America. Oh, really? Or as imports from Walmart. Huh. I'm going to point out, I did not mention Metallica this week. <laughs> I did. I did not. Um, yeah, I think FOMO is a thing. And I think there's a thing. I had such a big CD collection at one point, like... 5,000 CDs that I had been buying from 1991 to like 2015. I am never going to have like that same profile and I don't want to. And you have said that there's a cap on your My cap, my personal cap is 1,200. Is and you're kind of yeah. there, aren't you? Uh, no, no. We have 1,150 total. I mean, just yours. I don't know how much mine is because my Discogs page, it's got everything. Okay. But I have uh, three Calyxes with uh, eight. So I have 24 Calyxes, which holds about 1,200. When that's full, I am going... Yeah, I'm just going to pick off whatever you get start to sell. I'm going to just pick off whatever I'm I want. not actually going to do it to Discogs anymore. I have yeah. not sold a record on Discogs in three months. I'm, I'm just going to go to the... PayPal you money. Oh, that's fine. I'm just going to go to the record store and just you know, trade them in. Don't do that. Which so actually... Can... Unless you need to make a profit on them, sell them to me. No, I'd make more money selling it to you. Yeah. And I wouldn't even charge full price. Well, but go. that actually moves in wonderfully my next point all right then what are you going to do with all of these extra riches you have acquired from your record collection now i'm going to give you one guess at how much my record collection is worth at median pricing there are 1150 total records a lot of them are thrift shop quality a lot of them are collector quality so just throw out a number according to discogs discogs pricing Are you going to my Discogs page? Turn it. Okay. Punched in my calculator. Write right a number. $21,000. Real close. eighteen five. dollars Discogs ranks my collection at eighteen thousand five. dollars So I could sell these things and just get out of any debt I'm ever in. Yeah. Remember when I just said I haven't sold a record on Discogs in six months? So this is not your retirement. This is it's not that big. A win. It's, it's not a Bitcoin or no, it is know. Bitcoin basically, really. Well, because it's less than it's Bitcoin. Gonna, well, it's going to fall apart. Real like estate that. is a better venture, as you know. Oh, yeah. Real estate is a much better venture. And <clears throat> to just don't expect this to, you know, unless you're willing to part with your grails. Like I have not been willing to part with my 
uh, Pink Floyd, Adam Hart, Mother, because it's a red super vinyl. I have not been willing to part with my Guar Hello vinyl or Hello on vinyl. I have not been willing to part with those. When I, I mean, I can always go back and get them. Paid a lot of money for that Hello. I don't know what you paid for the Adam Hart Mother. One fifty and one. I just had a great eBay when I bought Adam Hart Mother. Okay, I had just had a great month on eBay. Uh, it was when I was between jobs after my last company uh, limited amount of position. I sold like fifteen hundred bucks on eBay over the course of that year. Of course, you no know, that that month in October or was it November? November. They they terminated me on October thirtieth. So. Uh, I took two weeks to myself and then I ended up getting my job now. And during that time I was selling on eBay and I, at the end, I'm like, oh, well, I'm working again. I am going to spend some of this money now on myself. And I bought a copy of Adam Hart and mother it was $90 plus shipping. And I, Adam Hart mother is not my favorite, but I wanted one red Japanese super vinyl from the seventies. And that's an actually a good question to talk about another time. I had considered selling it when we had had some problems. You know, everybody runs into money problems and especially when you're renovating stuff and dealing with real estate, but neither here nor there. Everything is wonderful in my life. Everything is wonderful. wonderful. But if you're not willing to unload, like I was willing to sell my copies of Marilyn Manson records. The fact that it became a total shit bag made it easier. I was willing to sell my Bloodhound Gang record. I was willing to sell the Coheed and Cambria records that I bought at the very beginning of my collecting days because they got so overpriced that I couldn't justify it anymore. And, you know, it was, was help to buy groceries that week. Unless you're willing to sell those things, just because it says it's 20 bucks on Discogs doesn't mean you're going to get 20 bucks. Keep in mind, if it's $20 on Discogs, there's going to be 400 of them for sale. So do not, unless you're going to be a professional flipper and then I hate you, just consider this is only for your enjoyment. You will get nothing else out of it. When you die, when I die, I'm going to leave behind me 1,200 records. Actually, probably not because I'm going to give them to my kid before I die because we're going to be paring down to a motor home during our retirement. So I've got about 20 more years of this and you know what that's didn't great you tell me you were going to move to philly and at some point get a townhouse in philly you're not going to live in a motor home in philly no we're the there's actually talk like you're in no it's, it's lovely there's actually talk of us having a northern and a southern home mm, wow, fancy. and then airbnb being the one like well, summer and in one airbnb the other yeah summer in philly <clears throat> winter in whatever we have in the southern home and then take like three month road trips to get to each one. Hmm. That's retirement is a ways away and we can still dream. The world has not ruined us yet. But, you know, and do actually, I'm going to bring up point seven, which is not on the list, but it's related to point six, which I brought into point three. Do not feel bad about the size of your collection. You know, when Keefe talks about how many records I have, yes, I have a shit ton. I actually have more records than I've ever had CDs. I have less records than I have MP3s, which most of them came from this is the 500 or 600 CDs I had when I started buying records. And the, I don't even know how many albums I've been sent from reviewing music. If you want to get a shit ton uh, of MP3s, send Keefe three or four reviews of any album and you can get on the MP3 gravy. Omar, fix this. Thank you, Omar. Anyway, we had a bit of a snafu with uh, technologies. Uh, it sucks ass when it sucks, but it's great when it when it doesn't. Anyway, so the point I was trying to make is do not be worried about the size of your collection. Keefe has been throwing out how many records I have because he is amazed by it. Keeping in mind my collection, everything that's in my house was started 50 years ago. My collection is based off of a lot of records my father-in-law bought in the 60s and 70s. I started buying records personally back in 2015. So I'm pushing nine years of buying. And so if you do the math, it's not really all that many when you consider how many that I've gotten for a quarter. 
Don't worry about that. That doesn't matter. What matters is how much enjoyment you get, how much utility you get for your dollar. If I could be a little bit on the economic side, if I could be economics 1050 right now that I took in community college, it if you get 10 bucks worth of enjoyment, you know, when you talk about or when Duncan like agapes at some of the m- amounts of money I've spent on Guar or Pink Floyd or how extravagant some of these purchases can really be. Now think about that. I've had that Pink Floyd record for three years now. I've listened to it 200 times in those three years. It's a special record, that Guar record I, that I bought two years ago. I've listened to it a shit ton of times. I love that record. Have I gotten 150 bucks worth out of it? Damn straight I did. Because I've been able to listen to it over and over and over, and I have it. And I have it the way it was recorded, not the way it was created and wrapped up and ruined by Metal Blade Records two years later. But if you enjoy that thrift shop record you got down at Goodwill, down at St. Vincent de Paul or whatever. And, you know, I talk about, and Justin, friend of the show, Justin from Stormland, jokes about how he likes to point out how I love going to antique malls for records. Damn straight I do. And I've still got some stuff on that shelf over there that I got at Moon Fuzz Records at the St. Louis Antique Mall that I haven't checked yet that I am thrilled and my kid and I loved. So just be comfortable with who you are, whether that's getting everything in the world on vinyl, whether it's just buying the albums you'll only, like I started it, it's got to be 10 out of 10. I got to let's do it all the way through. If I don't let's do it all the way through. And then people start talking about vinyl worthy and, you know, and if that's where you can stay, you're going to save a lot of money and you're going to have a really high quality ratio in your collection. That was not me. I started buying every damn thing on vinyl. But you know what? Just you do you and be happy with what you do. And that's what I got. Bro, you're muted. You're muted. How about now? There we Omar, go. Omar, cut this. Um <laughs> Wise words. I have nothing to add to that. That's very good advice in general for everybody. Go on the journey you're on. Don't be on someone else's journey. If this is exciting to you because it's a hipster thing or it's a status thing or it's an ego thing or it's a record size thing, penis size thing, whatever it is, because I got to have some dick jokes in here, you know, find, find some joy in it. Don't be a jerk to other people in their journey. <laughs> That should be the whole point of this is just to find joy in the chase in the catch and then in the aftermath. You know, it, it if you spend time raising the cow, make sure you enjoy the steak. And I have nothing else. I believe it is my turn to take them out. Take us out. You take us home, sir. This has been a good one. Thanks for this, Chaser. More gore next week. We will get back to Guara. Promises are made because America must be destroyed. Anyway, Geefy, as always, thank you for joining me. I appreciate this. I appreciate being on the Ghost Cult Mag podcast network. This uh, this podcast was brought to you in association with, in accordance to, and on top of uh, teabagging Ghost Cult Mag, as I always do and always will. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us this week. There are a thousand podcasts. This is a small one. And the fact that you have chosen to listen to us is humbling and amazing. And I can't thank you enough for just even giving us an opportunity, even if you didn't make it this far. So if you did make it this far and you know someone that didn't make it this far, please let them know that I appreciate them even not making it this far. But with that being said, this has been the Galatia Musical Podcast, a Ghost Cult Mag podcast joint. And it does not play in Peoria, but vinyl does. Oh, wait, I'm recording.